physical presence of men brought up in Australia, but there the resemblance ends. They have different lifestyles. They have different hairstyles. Above all, they have different salaries. One of them is a balding media man who earns about 200 times less than the other guy in a good week. The other guy is a film star as powerful as Louis XIV, but he gives far fewer interviews. Yet the one with the hair has agreed to meet the one without. Don't ask why, it's a mystery thriller. My first appointment with Mel Gibson was at the office of his production company, Icon, on the Warner Brothers lot. Mel wins Oscars and makes money. Braveheart alone won five Oscars and grossed more than $200 million. Clive James for Mel Gibson? Oh, sure. Come on in. He's expecting you. He's here? Yeah, he's right Exactly. Right. Usually, Mel meets the press only to plug his latest movie, say the minimum nicely, and go home. Yet he had now decided to give me ten days of his time. It almost certainly wouldn't be because he wanted to bear his soul. With his pull, he could get that from the Pope. I recognize the face. Yeah, I, get, I recognize the footsteps. <laughs> <on the carpet. laughs> Your career would be in trouble if I didn't recognize the face. What do you think of <laughs> My partner, Bruce Davies, from the... Uh, ah. Hey, Bruce. Hey. Clive James. I've heard a lot about you, sir. Hey, Clive, how are you? Oh, perhaps, you're, perhaps you've heard of us here. Yeah, yeah I... I, I, <laughs> I actually read this this morning over breakfast. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Most boring, yeah. 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 It has a big message for us all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Would you mind taking me into your office? Sure. sure. Step right away. See you again later on. Okay. Cheers. See ya. Ah. Well, what do you think? Is this a memorabilia from every movie, or just a... Uh, just a few, just whatever fits in here. This yeah. is the stuff you're not allowed to take home, you know. Uh, so I, it becomes like a spare I, room. I think I recognize that sword. Is that the actual... Well, that's it, yeah, that's the actual heavy one. That's uh, The Braveheart sword. They had heavy ones, light ones. This is like... This is the one for... God, it is heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Did you have to... Can I? Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, would point. it would it work. It would work. It would actually yeah. chop someone up. Yeah, I think so. Did you have to... You had to get a training to hold that, right? A little fellow in uh, in London knew all about it. He was like a ballet dancer. He was. Yeah. Where are the where where are the Oscars? If you don't mind me asking, you should have about five of them here. Well, they should be around, but you know, it's the kind of thing that a cleaner would knock off. You know. <laughs> so really, the real stuff isn't here. No. <laughs> no. What, can I just ask you one question that's fascinated me since I came into the room 45 sure. seconds ago? Yeah, okay. Is why has every, all the characters on these posters got moustaches on them? Oh, uh, hell, I, I think I did that one day about six months ago, but only on the glass on the outside so that the resale value doesn't go down. Oh, right. <laughs> you sort of distrust all this glory, is that it? Yeah, I guess, but I think people look better with moustaches, even Jody, you know? Or, or, or maybe I'm worried about what people think, that it's narcissism, because if you walk down this place, it's just like... 6,000 pictures of me on every wall. You know, it's practically wallpapered, but... But I've seen places like this, and they're, they're temples to the ego, and you act, what you've got act, actually here is a much more efficient sort of uh, Nissan hut atmosphere, isn't it? Wayne? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not elaborate, um, but elaborate things can happen in an environment like this, you know, which is, uh, which is uh, you know, it's good. I caught, caught Mel at the start of a busy week. Icon turns out small pictures which don't always star him or make much money, and huge pictures which do star him and make a fortune every time. His latest blockbuster, Conspiracy Theory, was about to open, and he was off to remind everyone that he was in it. Uh, I've seen you on the American talk shows, and you do it, you do it pretty well, but I do get the impression you'd, almost be, you'd rather be almost anywhere else. Uh, there is a kind of um, masturbatory aspect to it that I find really kind of, I cringe, you know, on, on these things. I was. Uh, I was on the Oprah show a couple of days ago, and I, I just didn't want to be there. I felt like the only guy in a, you know, in a room full of, like a women's pajama party or something. I just felt like the only guy in the whole place. It was uh, extremely uncomfortable. Well, there's a lot of press. Have you got a sort of survival strategy for coping with all that? Lie to them, and and uh, <laughs> and just kind of, you know, go through. Just just remain calm and don't have much of a plan. I think that's the best way. Sometimes that gets you into trouble because things get out before they're supposed to. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you have to answer for them later. Well, what's it like going to Larry King? Larry King? Larry's okay. He's not going to ask you a tough question. Well, he might ask me a tough question, but uh, I don't know. I guess I'll have to come up with some snappy answer to put him off the, the truth. <laughs> Larry King fronts a CNN talk show which is broadcast to almost every country on Earth. 
An endorsement from him would help flog conspiracy theory in the global marketplace. Mel Gibson, who stars in a movie I call A Hoot. Were you cast before Julie Roberts? I was, yeah. Did you have a hand in asking for her? Yes, I did. I asked for her hand. Uh, I bet. The rest of <laughs> We took the whole piece. Yeah. All right, what's it like? Most big film stars on a talk show make it look as if they're doing TV a big favor. Mel behaved like a normal human being. The show was as relaxed as these things ever get. I took Andreas, my driver, to see your movie. Oh, oh, Andreas liked it? And I have the combination for the coffee pot. You do? For the lot, yes, 679. You do? Yes, sir. You knew what that you combo was? Yes, please. For my wife, if you please. Oh, okay. What's her name? Thanks, guys. Virginia. Thanks, Virginia. Virginia. Great meeting you, Harry. Nice meeting you. I couldn't Harry. remember that. Harry. Harry. <laughs> combination. It's okay, Harry. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I always wanted to be Harry. Yeah. Mel loved it, so from then on I was Harry. Harry back now. <laughs> I loved it a bit less, but hell, Mel, you. if you and Larry call me Harry, why should I fight fate? Hey, geez. These you guys are fast on the draw. Back outside, the name? fans were waiting. Huh? Really? They are always waiting, really? wherever he is. They would have been waiting if he was in Venice or Venezuela. Paris or Paraguay. He was a long time signing his way out. There you go. What's your name? Anthony. Next day was due to start with an icon power structure breakfast at the Swish Four Seasons Hotel. I was invited along by Bruce and Mel to share the bread rolls. Prominent at the breakfast was publicity expert Alan Nerob, responsible for icon's marketing campaigns all over the planet. On the agenda was the next icon movie Mel would be starring in himself, an action thriller called Payback. Because of the nature of that film, we really have to control all the information because we're going to come up with a lot of... We've already talked about it. There's too much opportunity well, there. Concerned? I prefer Just that, the actually. nature of the, the violent nature. Um, it's got a lot of redeeming yeah. qualities, that character. Oh. He does. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, already, we already... I wouldn't invite him we, home, but... We, yeah. we already <laughs> figured out how to deal with it. Well, Mel, you know, there's a lot of gratuitous violence in this picture. He says, yes, you're right. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't try and fight it or it's hide it, what can you do? It's specifically done for a specific That's purpose. That's absolutely right. Does Mel have to go into the overseas market personally to make himself available to the press? Or I mean, it's up to the studio. They would love him to travel <laughs> in every city around the world. Uh, but what we're doing, for example, Clive, we're bringing the world to Mel. We may hub in one area of a continent and bring the entire continent to that specific region. But you cannot travel to the 10, 10 or 12 top territories in a continent and get through it in one piece. As they say. Yeah, yeah. You, you lose it somewhere, usually France. Yeah. That's where I've lost, I've lost it there twice on camera. You have. What happened? I've actually gone for the guy. <laughs> actually, it was... I always well, managed to well, get the tapes, though, so it's yeah. not around to be viewed. But you well deserved. He did deserve it, too. Oh, he was yeah. being uh, a little inflammatory. French for an asshole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you say it? Adol. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was something like that. Yeah. Well, how did he get you? What did he, what did he say? I forgot how it went. He was, it was some kind of setup. He just kept going after something that... Yeah, some little point. And, yeah. he said, and he finally said, well, I, I think uh, you are a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... I said, well, you're a... <laughs> like, <laughs> and he, <laughs> anyway, we, we started... Uh, I, I ended up sort of ripping, throwing the table, and he was like, ah, backing off. And then they had the camera rolling, and I'm roaring around the room. Not necessarily great PR. Nah, yeah, but it was very helpful. Right. I'll be the fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Larry. It's Hello. Hey, it's for you. <laughs> Two ones, musical no, fans. Hello. Hey, no, it's not for me. It's, it's for you, Clyde. Clyde. <laughs> Just for my benefit, these jokers had set up a Three Stooges routine whereby they all got simultaneous phone calls. This will be fun. A gremlin got in on the gag. One of the calls was genuine from the Warner's studio boss who had obviously decided it would be wise to offer Mel's company anything it wanted, provided, of course, that Mel gave the studio everything it wanted. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> so we just woke up with sore anatomy and a $20 note in our hand, right? Well, you know, he wants to congratulate me on making the best deal in the movie for making, him. No, for movie making history, yeah. <laughs> for him. Yeah. <laughs> Next stop was a courtesy appearance on behalf of Christopher Reeve's Spinal Regeneration Charity. Most of the big stars give at least some of their time to charity, 
but they quite often behave like sovereigns distributing florins to the underprivileged. It would be interesting to see how Mel did it. I'm okay. Perfect. Okay. One of his fellow charity workers turned out to be Rene Russo, romantic interest in two of Mel's money spinners. He's the best workers, I, and I really mean that. You see it's on camera, so I'm saying the absolute best. I, could, I told him I could do every single thing. <laughs> oh, really? I, I, <clears throat> I could do every single movie with Mel Gibson. That's the truth, too. Thank you. It's, it's, you know, two movies now. So sure. it's a long time to be on the set with one person. Three. We're doing a hundred. Do you hear that? You haven't said. <laughs> I haven't oh, she's said. still making a deal. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I have not made. No, that's not true. <laughs> but I don't know. You know these things. I, who knows if they're on or off? Furtive smoking. <laughs> This would be a brand called Furtive. Furtive. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Furtive filter kings. For those who dare. <laughs> but if you want, we can either do a question and answer thing like this, and then maybe if a statement comes to you, you can just look directly into the camera and give it. Sure. Uh, Hi, I'm uh, very proud and happy to be among Christopher Reeve's circle of friends. And uh, I think uh, one of the, a, a really important thing about um, spinal cord injury is that people assume that it can't be repaired, but in fact, uh, recently, the research in neuron regeneration uh, exceeds the funding, and that that's all that's holding it up. So there's a great deal of hope, and there are things that can be done about it. I mean, people are getting their movement back. So fund a fixer. Thank you. <laughs> Another crew snatched a free sequence for their Elvis Presley special. All right, the 20th anniversary, Elvis's death. Were you a fan of, of Elvis's stuff? Everybody's a fan of Elvis's stuff. I mean, everybody's got the, you know, the lip and the, you know, I was just doing it yesterday. I met Marianne Mobley yesterday, who was in uh, a couple of pictures with Elvis. What were they, Clive? Uh, Harem Scarum. Harem Scarum, she was in, and, and uh, the other one. And Girl Trouble or something. <laughs> and we were all doing uh, Elvis impressions, you know? I have seen the flaming star of death, you know? <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and, you know, I was in a 7-Eleven the other day. And a bejeweled sleeve came out of the frozen food section and handed me an Eskimo pie. But it wasn't Elvis, it was Ted Jenkins and he owned the establishment. He's just trying to attract more customers. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Bejeweled <laughs> sleeve. Body signing time. Oh, no. This time the fans got at him before he'd even left the building. With Doris for oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Once again, there were fans on the way out, and once again, Mill played the game without strangling anybody. If he was bored, he was covering it up like a gent. Back to business with another big moment for Icon, the opening night of 187, their socially responsible movie about America's Blackboard Jungle State Schools, starring Samuel L. Jackson. Pull him up right to the front of the director's go, right? That's where you're going to drop him off. Not a sexy subject in any sense, even if Kelly Rowan is in it starring as an improbably good-looking teacher. The improbably good-looking Mel Gibson wasn't in the movie at all, but in his role of mogul, he was there at the opening to lend the occasion his clout, with his wife quietly in the background. I pass myself off as one of his security men, ready to stop a crossbow bolt, a broadsword or a bullet from any demented fan who fancied his chances against Mad Max, Braveheart or Maverick. Alan strictly apportioned Mel's time to the TV crews. Mel gave everyone a piece of his face to improve the prospects of a movie his face wasn't even in. A monster. A little monster. <laughs> the movie's first public screening went off without a cough. But at the standard upbeat party afterwards, chickens were only being eaten. They weren't being counted. No matter how well Mel does in Mad Lethal Braveheart 4, Icon won't be allowed to go on making too many serious little pictures if they don't get their money back. The press had seen the movie too. What would they say next morning? <laughs> Cracking jokes. I don't know if I can let you see this quite. <laughs> okay. There you go. Hi, hey, Doug. Doug. Hey, Doug, you slap your bow peepers on that yet? Yeah. Through here? Yeah, why not, Bruce? Hey, morning, Bruce. Hey, guys, how you doing? Yeah, good. Well, I'm okay. How are you? Well, uh, after being you after, after being brutalized in the uh, L.A. Times. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, it's not so bad. 
Why? What, what's the good part of it? Well, it's not so good at all. Eh? Well, what, who is he is the question. Who is he or what is he? What is he? No, who is he? <laughs> Can I answer that? Please. Uh, he's, he's a critic for the LA Times. Um, thank God, you know, thank goodness that he's actually there to, um, you know, show us all how to, how to make film and how its filmmakers make film and show us where it went wrong and, and how to fix it. Thank goodness he's there. If only he could make the supreme sacrifice, tear himself away from his typewriter and make films himself, I'm sure we'd all witness perfection and we could learn by his example, don't you think? That's a damn good idea. Yeah. <laughs> After Mill got the sarcasm out of his system, he soon recovered his objectivity. And I made some stinkers, particularly early on in my career, you know, before I even met Bruce, you know, it's like, I used to think of them and, and not regret them at all. Even if, it, if, if it's not the best experience in the world, it's school fees. <laughs> You're learning the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Bruce, what did you think when Mill said he wanted to direct? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I was up for it. I knew, I knew uh, some time before that 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 was something that uh, Mel wanted to do. You know, Mel's always uh, said that this business is about longevity, and having different strings to your bow is uh, is important. When I looked at Braveheart, I immediately thought, has he taken on too much? Did you feel what you had? Um, there are some days when it's pretty. It can weigh on you pretty heavily. Just the logistical nightmare of the whole thing, everything that had to come together to just get one shot, you know. And um, it, it, we took a lot of trying at it, and day after day, and very long days indeed, and not much sleep, and it was, it was the best time I've ever had. I just, I loved it, but like, you know, round about week nine, you're, you're, yeah, you hit the wall. your ass is raggedy, yeah. you're hitting the wall, and... Bruce, did you ever have to tell him with enough's enough? That's yeah, I guess we had that conversation well, a couple was, of times. That was it, too. I had Bruce chewing on my ass the whole time. And it was like, made you rip pages out of the script, you know, because you said, well, I haven't got the time and money. Okay, rip it out. And then you had to go around and think of some other way to, to, to affect the same story. I imagine it soothed some of the pain to win all those Oscars. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. I earned every ounce of that gold. <laughs> the really nice thing was that, that you're recognized by your peers in this really tough community. I mean, it's tough. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. After you. Like Braveheart and unlike 187, the next Icon project, Payback, would have to be a hit because Mel would be in it. But in his role as executive, he also had the decisive say on who got cast. With director Brian Helgeland, Mel and the rest of the Icon team auditioned a heavy via video. I pick up the phone and this guy's a dead man. And this time he stays dead. Down, down. What do you say, honey? What'd you tell him? I swear, Val, on my mother. F your f mother! <laughs> what the f are you looking at? I want you to find him. Find Parker. What'd you think? I like him. Yeah. I like him, yeah. 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 A, because no one, you haven't seen him before. And B, he's got that, I think he's got the menace. But funny at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. The other guy that you mentioned, he, he does the weasel thing great, but but um, uh, the uh, he didn't he, he he didn't scare you. He doesn't scare right. you. Right. At the end of the day, you think he's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's not scary. Yeah. Weirdly enough, he's been in like five Brian De Palma films. That's his only films. Are Must all, be his godson or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think if we don't hire him, we'll probably get a horse's head in your bed from Brian DeFond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got another thing, too. What if he got shot in the head? I mean, that's kind of cool. You know, if Parker got shot in the head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been yeah. shot in the head. Yeah. Because he really yeah. thought, he doesn't, can't believe that he's alive. Right. I think he should do it. Right. Rather than kick him in the head, I think he should actually put the gun on his head and go bang, like that. So he wanders around with it like a hole in his head for the rest of the thing. All right. <laughs> 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 well, God. And there's going to be something leaking out of it. Yeah, every, yeah, every now and then a little discharge, yeah. 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 Still on the payback project, Mel headed out for Chinatown to be shown a location by his chief stuntman, Mick Rogers. How brave are you allowed to be? You're insured and everything, huh? I'm totally insured, and I'm not allowed to be very brave at all. And in fact, I don't want to be very brave. I leave it to him, see? He's, he's, he's the guy, see? So what's the toughest thing you've ever made him do? He, he's pretty brave. Yeah. I mean, I, he, he plays it down, but I mean... We stuck him in some like spots that you got to think. Yeah. You got to be a good athlete. You do think. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> sometimes there's just no other way to do it. I mean, you know, like 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 the jumping of, of the stagecoach Maverick. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we put Mel in between the teams and we run the teams. And That's him in there as well. In between the horses. Why they're running? Uh -huh. He goes, well, can't we cable him on like with his hands? I said, 
no, because his feet slip off and he's dragging underneath the, the horses. He get, he gets what if the horses have a crash? You know, I gotta get loose. He's gotta jump free. So they couldn't tie me on. So it, <laughs> it, it comes down that he's just gotta do a stunt. It's kind of funny because we'll hear interviews that, you know, you know, I do my own stunts. You know, it's like, and we just <laughs> hey, who is that supposed to be? <laughs> Now, now, simple test, Doug. Where's the off ramp? Where's the off ramp? <laughs> <laughs> I was late for a thing this morning and I had to drop the kids at school. And I said to my daughter, I said, hey, do you mind if I don't stop the car for you to get out? Like if I just kind of slow down and you jump out? And she was like, huh. she she Yeah, oh yeah, she bit. Totally bit. She couldn't figure out. Like, Dad. <laughs> Do the, the head on gun. And uh, the basic setup is that Mel and his partner have been casing these this gang of guys that have a cash drop every day. So, what's tough about it? These cars are going to be driven out. Well, no, what we're going to do is. Uh, you got to imagine the cars are bigger. Right. <laughs> yeah, a little bit bigger. <laughs> and what we'll do is uh, the truck and the car would be on this, like, a continuous loop. So, like, one semi truck will pull the two vehicles together at a predetermined spot. And, uh, you know. The third car will pull, will pull from here through the cables and suck them together. It's a 40 mile an hour impact, and if you can imagine hitting a brick wall at 40 miles an hour head on, I mean, it's just it's too much. I mean, yeah. I've seen it done, and both guys just were just so rattled. They, said they came so close, close to getting hurt permanently. It's, yeah. it's not worth it. I mean, even if you strap them in, their brain comes out their nose. So when we cut to him coming out, it's like, you know, you're going like, you know, like it was a big hit. Oh yeah, there should be some blood coming oh, yeah. down. You know what? There should be a little blood coming out the nose. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, no, it's like, you know, it's like you guys take a, a massive hit too. Yeah. Mel had been on the location for no more than five minutes, but already the fans were gathering. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yet again, he made sure they all got what they wanted. Hey, Mel was back in the controlled environment of the studio on his way to check out costumes for the payback project. Did you always want to be an actor? Um, no. Huh? No. I don't think so. I think maybe I did. I, mean, I used to goof off a lot. You know? yeah. In fact, that was the answer I gave. They said, somebody asked me, why do you want to be an actor? I was like 19, 18, 19. And I said, well, I've always kind of goofed off. I thought I might as well get paid for it. Uh -huh. He says, what do you think acting is goofing off? <laughs> and I said, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So why, why did you want to be an actor? What is it in you that has to come out in this manner? Well, then somebody asked me that same question. I, honest to God, could not come up with an answer that sounded in any way intelligent. It was, and everyone else was saying, you know, so I can feed the starving people and be Afro, so I can do, you know, all this kind of stuff. And that's bullshit. They're not here for that reason. And I honestly couldn't say anything. He says, is it because you love it? And I said, yeah, I really love it. He said, that's the best answer. He's like, <laughs> so I thought, hey, okay. Yeah. He said that uh, this could be the best reason of all. That's for the love of the craft, you know? So, Have a good one. Yeah, I've sort of gone with that ever since. I still can't think of a good reason. Warner Lot is the production center for the worldwide hit TV series, ER. Mel spotted a friend, George Clooney. Ah, forget it. Hey. Oh. How are you? But, uh, thanks. Uh, hi, it's really nice to meet you. Nice My meet you. father was a big fan of yours, but he was a small boy. He was a fan a long time. My grandfather was here. Yeah, well, I could have sworn that the exteriors in, uh, in, in, in really were in Chicago. They are. We, do, we do a bunch of them in Chicago, and then we come out here. And uh, Most of the time, this is just for uh, when an ambulance pulls up. And you do, they have to do trauma scenes that are a little too tricky to do. How do you, you remember all that stuff on such a fast? I thing. write them down on people. <laughs> he thinks I'm you kidding. No, uh, a lot of times, you, you know, it, it becomes, you get to know the, the, the words a little bit better. Now, you read it off the mother. Yeah, as they come in, super ventricular tag your rhythm. <laughs> That's the word I couldn't get through. Oh, yeah. I can't do that. Well, you're a quick study, aren't you? You can actually remember that. Because Brando never could, Brando would run. Marlon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why you can't understand much, but when he forgets, he sort of makes it sound like words. Yeah. No. Does that for a little while. Remember, uh, that was yeah. great when he's, when he just forgot his lines, and he's sitting there, there's a fly on my head. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just talking. There's a green suitcase slithering up my leg. I forgot my line. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't get away with that. Right. So you're uh, now uh, reached the stage of universal fame. Yes, I think you can see that by the uh, the all the people that are wandering around. I'm over, I'm over here, <laughs> right over here. Very famous. 
Do you have a technique for handling this the way Mel does? You know, just to pull out a gun. You mean drink? Yeah. Say, shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drink. Drink. <laughs> drink. Yeah. That's that, you drink. That's my technique. I just drink through it. And Mel taught me a lot of that. And I, I look up to him for that. I passed it on to him. It was kind of something like the mummy's curse. You know, you got to hand it on to someone else before you can quit it. Right. <laughs> Here, drink this. Wow. But it's nice, though, that you're letting me call you Mel now. Oh, yes, yeah. Mr. Gibson. There's so many years. Oh, gifted one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and godlike, too. I thought that was, really, that was That one hurt. And I just, the bowing after a while starts to hurt the back. Because Mel started from television, didn't you? I did. You didn't? Yeah. So the first thing I did was episodes of the Sullivan's for about a week and then I just couldn't take it. And they said, hey, you want to come back? And I went, no. Really? You're kidding? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's it. Yeah. And I went to the stage. They thought you'd be a doctor with a white coat and all that in my state. No, I was and a naval went. lawyer. You know, you wouldn't think so many people would have trouble with their belly buttons. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I did some more afterwards, you know. The odd pilot here and there. But I'd just do the pilot and then whoosh, yeah. take off because I didn't want to get stuck there. But but I'm not saying that's a no, bad No, no, it's not. Thing. It's good. <laughs> <really>. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Gibson. If everything works out for George Clooney, he will be the next Mel Gibson. But Mel Gibson, even if he's turning into the next Sam Goldwyn, hasn't stopped being a film star yet. For the payback project, how he looks has to come first. Nice to see you again. You're such a faker. Hi, Mel. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Hi, how are you? Very well. Are these women? Okay. I've never met them before in my life. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, Kimberly. Nice to Molly. Molly. Nice Kimberly and Molly. They worked, they worked the last show with me. They we did conspiracy theory with them. They get me dressed every day. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were very helpful. We were thinking of having you wear a leather jacket instead. Mm -hmm. It's a little more casual than a suit. And I want, I show it to Brian. It's more texture, this kind of. Yeah. Mm. So it would be, look more interesting. Mm -hmm. You became like reptilian, let's call it. Oh, I see. Snake man. Snake man, <laughs> That's what they say I know about that. me. <laughs> so this is this is the beginning. This is a change one. We have different choices for it. This is Brian's favorite, actually. <laughs> very very late 50, early 60s. Yeah, it's real professional criminal clothes. <laughs> Don't you think? What's this? So he's got tape, Parker. Huh? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> kind of works better somehow. Yeah. Can you leave the roll behind when you change clothes at the end of the day and go home? Absolutely. I never even get into it. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're not, really, you're not one of these Day Lewis characters who has to wear the clothes to bed. No. Well, I don't. I don't subscribe to that theory. I mean, it works for some people. I mean, there's guys that put on 50 pounds and uh, Robert well, De Niro. Yeah, all that kind of caper. I, I uh, see. That's too much like hard work to live with that burden all the time. I'd much rather enjoy my life and then turn it on for the odd minute or two when you need it. When they say action, but. Maybe call me crazy, call me old-fashioned. Thin ties. I like that one. Yeah. That's bad. That's almost 70s, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very Charlie Bronson. Action. All right. <laughs> you can't get rid of the guy, can you? Hey. Hey, run him down. <laughs> some people some people think this guy, that guy works for a living. He doesn't really. He just plays ball all day. <laughs> Looked just like George Clooney. <laughs> he did look like George. I think that's his stunt double. Hey. Uh oh. We're in the forbidden zone. What's this? This is the place where you can't get through without knocking off your side mirrors. Uh, right. So we can always go back this way. Uh huh. Oh, oh shit! Hey, it's he, a, it's it's a, a, he's got doubles everywhere. I mean, people, people that look just like cloning, him. cloning. Hey, 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 good. Hey, uh, you know, uh, that's his triple. <laughs> Next stop was the gym. Merle's health is magnificent, helped by his dedication to the wisdom of the East, which he assured me enables him to smoke cigarettes without harm, because their negative energy has been extracted with appropriate gestures by a guru. I never did find out whether he was having me on with that kind of stuff, but there was no kidding about his constitution. There are oxen more frail than Mel. He's uh, keeping through the big uh, 
goal of yours personally, or are you just uh, joining in the LA way of life? Well, you know, I, it's, I don't really come into these places that often. I mean, I usually use the bedroom floor, and I got a couple of free weights, and maybe I'll get to it like once a week if you calisthenics and, and jog around the block, but that's about it. I don't go overboard on it. But more now than I used to. But I imagine you'd be followed around by a personal trainer. Yeah. No, I cannot stand it. You get some meathead to follow you around and say, one more, come on, one more, one more, one more. Motivation, you know, you want to punch him. Then go away. Do it till it hurts and stop. <laughs> After less than two miles, I needed to lie down. So I do these designer sit-ups, you know, it sort of exercises every kind of muscle in the abdominal area, lower, upper, middle, all that stuff. See, so if you just do this, you just kind of get in the upper ones. If you get into something like this, you're getting it all. You're getting the whole piece. You sort of get it up there and then push it up. Very impressive. How many of those do you do? Oh, I don't know, but 30, 40, depending on how you feel. 50. Just keep going for as long as you want until it starts to burn, you know? Want to try it? Oh, you put your hands under here. Put your hands sort of under the small of your back and lift your bottom and everything off. And then just wing away and bring them back down. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's it, right? Oh, well, oh. maybe you better not do it anymore. Wait a sec. No, I didn't not bad for a first effort, though. <sighs> After that, I left the hard work to Mel. I'd like to take my uh, aggressions out sometimes on a heavy bag. If you could just, like, could you hold the bag? Yeah, I'll hold it. Yeah. Maybe motivate me, just toss a few names Find out. some names? Know. Yeah, OK, oh. that's uh, President Clinton. OK. Ah! Hey. Wait! It's easy, you feel, it's not the way you feel about him. Yeah. What about Dustin Hoffman? Dustin, Dustin Hoffman? Dustin. Like many men who exhibit great self-control, Mel somehow suggests that what is being reined in is violence. Ah, good. That's, 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 that's a good big hand. What about the uh, Los Angeles Times critic? Oh. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. One way or the other, we'll make it. The conspiracy theory build-up was still building up, and the next stop was crucial. It would be the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Leno's personal endorsement for the movie would be even more important than Larry King's. This was serious stuff. Oh. Oh, I don't know that I need much for anyone. Just powder? Yeah, just a little dust. In the makeup room, I checked out Mel's hairline from close up. It's definitely all his. It's just arranged for maximum effect, and that's show business. Mm -hmm. I've got a spot. Where do you have a spot? 41 years old, I'm getting angry. Right here. Oh. Yeah, Great. that's what I like to hear. It's my imagination. I think it's less acne nowadays. It is, it is. Well, I was one of those kids that sometimes when I wake up, my mother would have to peel the sheets off my back. We're telling acne stories. Can I introduce your friend around here? Jay Leno arrived with a fan. Linda, how are you doing? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Thank you. That's Clive. How do you do? Hi, Clive. Clive, Clive. He's thrilled to meet Clive. Did you want anything else? Um, no. We'll see you out there, boss. Yeah, okay. Okay. All righty. I don't know. I need it. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Stand by, here we go. In three, two, Mel! Jay set up a top of the show gag with Mel in his character as the paranoid cab driver of Conspiracy Theory. Conspiracy Theory is a very good movie, okay, but it's made you totally paranoid. You saw it? How did you see it? How did you see it? It's not released yet. Hey, you're wearing a wire. <laughs> Wait a minute, you idiot! Listen, listen. Of hey. course I'm wearing a wire! I'm on TV, everybody wears a wire! That looks like a camera. From the NBC studios in Burbank, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Conspiracy Theory. This is an excellent film. It opens everywhere on Friday. Please welcome Mel Gibson. After that, it was a piece of cake. The cake Mel carried on was a back reference to the food fight they had last time. You could see why there would always be a next time. Mel gave good guess value. Chinese enthralled by any of your sounds because I've, a lot of people don't realize that you uh, they make great sounds. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But did you do any of your sounds for the Chinese? Oh yeah, you know, you know. Well, that's, that's very good. That's, that's water dropping. Yeah, it was a kind of torture for him, you know. Okay. <laughs> Mel wasn't going to be a problem just to prove that he was important. As any talk show host knows, right it's amazing how many film stars don't feel like that. You know, the contradiction of a fairy tale, I don't know. But, you know, the contradiction of a fairy tale being a true story is, is that sort of carries on in that vein. I don't want to go, or whatever. 
But the, the popcorn buckets will be in the theaters shortly. You might like a, an ASIC bag as well <laughs> after the popcorn okay. bucket. I need one. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they got the pop, they've got the popcorn uh, bags as well. So just, um, the interesting thing about the meeting is, is that uh, Paramount seemed to finally uh, got the message and see it not only as a film for children but for the entire family targeting 195,000 teachers, which will reach 6 million students. Uh, they, have to date, have 13,000 trailers uh, up. So, you know, all in all, I think Paramount has got their act together and heading in the right direction. Yeah. Last stop on the personal appearance circuit for conspiracy theory would be an all-black TV show called Vibe. Once again, there was a top-of-the-show gag to record, and once again, Mel showed no signs of standing on his dignity as an Oscar-winning director, while a somewhat lesser figure told him what to do. Uh, you got it, buddy, is when he says, take me to vibe. So it's like, a, you got it, buddy. Okay. And then, uh, at least I got you here on time, then under your breath, the camera, TV people. Okay. And I'll feed these to you. Yeah, okay. All right, ready to do it? Certainly. Okay, so let's get jacket and skull cap on. Jacket and skull cap. Okay, we're here. What a deal. Speed. Take us to Vibe. You got it. Buddy. Hey, you got it, buddy. One more time, please. You got it, buddy. Okay, next one is you just had a guy, you just ran into a guy and he did a hood roll and you're like, I hate when that happens. Oh, I, I hate when that happens. Hey, at least I got to here on time. I think he said he had to turn the camera to say at least I got you here on time. Like kind of reveal himself a little Which, bit. Oh, I see. Well, I'm going to cut to this. <laughs> After Mel's close-ups had been cut into the previously shot stunt footage, the show was in the bag. Hey, at least I got you here on time, man. Actor, Academy Award winner and lousy cab driver, Mel Gibson! But he still worked hard at looking casual. There was no more hustling left to do. With the big night getting awfully close, Mel told me there was a place where he could get away from it all and relax, something I had not yet seen him try. The Grand Havana Room, LA's most exclusive oh, club. The walk-in humidor, it's a constant 72% humidity. Look at all these holes. There's not, there's not just you, you've got Schwarzenegger yeah. here. Hey, stop box dropping. <laughs> box dropping. <again>. Box dropping. <laughs> I, I just saw meatloaf up there. Meatloaf? Yeah. You did? He's Mr. Loaf. <laughs> there we go. Ah, the stash. What I live what for. What do you got? Oh, anything you'd like, Clive. Yeah, you uh, can have. Uh, take your pick. Anything? Uh, you're allowed, allowed to have Cuban cigars? I imagine you're not. allowed to have them. You're just not allowed to bring them across the border into the country. Once they're here, there's nothing wrong. With them. So they appear by magic. Right? Yes. Uh, somehow they got here. <laughs> this, uh, you know, teleportation or something. This is a lifetime supply, or is it just a few weeks supply? How much do you smoke? Oh, I'll probably have. About half a dozen stogies a week. Uh -huh. I love them. Yeah. My personal favorite. <sighs> well, it's hard to uh, decide, really. I'm very fond of these. Yeah, they're ammunition, aren't they? They're huge. It's beautiful. That is How long does it take It's a good 45 to an hour. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're very interested in your health, so I've seen that. Did, uh, yeah. Does being uh, sort of uh, health-oriented really square up with smoking these things? No. These will kill you. <laughs> but not as fast as cigarettes. <laughs> Instead of getting lung rot, you'll get mouth rot or tongue rot or something uh, like that. You know, so it's, uh, it's worth it. Huh? Yeah. Well, would you like one, Clive? Well, yes, I think I would. But I think maybe it's something less ambitious than that. What do you okay, say? Here, let's say uh, a light smoke, mm -hmm. nice light smoke, a fast smoke, one that won't... Uh, one that won't give me uh, mouth rot. Have one, one of these little babies. Yeah, yeah. about my size. Yeah. Well, that's about the last chance you'll have to get into my drawers. <laughs> And you know, locking up my box. Okay. Right. And nobody else can get in there. That's the whole so, idea. That's the idea. Is this place, is this a refuge for you? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, I, I can't go too many places where... This sounds funny, but where I'm accepted in, in a normal fashion. Um, 